This letter is addressed to Miss Brittany Page and to Mr. Jesse Dollarmore. We were at John C. Roseman, California. I just caught the podcast regarding the homeless video that uh, was posted by Miss Page. I'm a native of Southern California. Born and raised here. Not sure if I'm going to die here, here or not. But yeah, I've seen it. I'm close and personal. Been short time, but got out of it. Yes, housing is important. The problem is, it's the political will, clout, and other factors. We're talking about NIMBY. We're talking about money. We're talking about public opinion, which you're still working on with the videos. It's admirable on that one. You have to change public opinion at this point to get it going. And politics, well, that's going to be up to the good graces of our our dysfunctional congr- congressional system in the United States government. But if you're talking about local, I'm sure Governor Gavin Newsom, if he was made well aware of this, he might be able to suggest a few things, and maybe a few of the candidates, if they are also persuaded in doing so, to get educated about this. If they've already known about this, then it's a different story altogether, because we still have to change public opinion about this, and the public opinion is not in my backyard. Miss Page, you stayed here for about a decade. I'm wondering... How did you find certain communities have taken to homelessness? Since being out here in Antelope Valley from 2005, current, I'd seen it up close and personal. I'd seen how people get pushed around, shoved around, and basically told to get lost. I've seen other people trying to help them a great deal. There are programs out here for that. One of them was Grace Community, and they're still working on it. They tried to get a community shelter going, but NIMBY, politics, money, public opinion. And then you had Paris. Mayor Rex Paris had and heard too many complaints about the homelessness. He made it a crusade several years ago, if I'm not mistaken, from the stories I've heard and and read about and seen. The cops would treat the homeless as if they're second-class citizens. Paris didn't want them in Lancaster. At the time, we had Palmdale mayor. Also didn't want them in Palmdale either. But we still had services out there mostly in Lancaster, to help people. But there's no facility out there. There still isn't. Not much anyway. And the shelters, temporary at best. I don't blame the homeless people for saying no. But they'd use it for just in case. Families are the ones who are more exposed to it. I don't think... uh, Miss Anna or Miss Shank ever figured that one out because I don't think they've been out here or talking to people about it. I have been to the food banks many times since staying out here. There have been times when me and my mother and my brother, when they were both alive, we lived out here and had to deal with food banks, and at the food banks we deal with a lot of people. Those who have, those who have not. And they both struggle. And the stories that you would hear. Not to mention when you go through the county facilities to theoretically help you get food and temporary cash. But you have to pay back to the county. Especially if you happen to get on the programs to apply for Social Security. Once you get the Social Security, say goodbye to part of it right there. The county would take in their fill. 
that you're still dealing with your social security depending on how much you've already put into the system you get a small por uh, portion of it back every month it also applies to disability as well I'm a recipient I have seen and experienced what it's like to be without a home kicked out of one particular trailer home because of a bureaucratic mess and not to mention scam artists me and my brother found ourselves living in a U-Haul truck which almost became our home however my brother managed to get maybe a couple of nights at a motel in the same area we're living in which is Rosemond California but then the fun part began of trying to obtain funds from friends, families, if they were available, to complete strangers online to help keep paying for the place until we found another one. We were fortunate enough that we went to a Salvation Army facility at Mojave. They made one night stay, only that, and we would go back to get more results my brother was lucky. My, he was a uh, former military, so we had a veteran support group working on it. It would take him about four weeks, max, to find and secure a place because the apartment complex that I currently reside right now had to make sure that this place was available. But we had to live on the streets for about a month. And when you're living in a U-Haul truck, you're open season or an open target because those things have to have, well, let's just say that they had to be put back into the U-Haul yard, otherwise we'd consider it as Grand Theft Auto. And we were about days to nearly hours away from that happening. We had stuff in there. We took it out and brought it into the motel room. We were getting donations sporadically, but we were getting them because my brother was a vet. And they were coming from places who had been, actually from people who had been there. Active duty and inactive duty. So the veterans were trying to help each other out in our situation because my brother was a vet a long time ago. He did a stint in the Navy. Unfortunately, the circumstances regarding that prevented us from obtaining full veteran benefits. A long story, a lot of videos I've made on this one on my own YouTube channel regarding this. Regarding the mental health component, uh, but I must finish the other story, must I? All right, I must. We obtained the apartment. We had the key for it. And for about two or three days, we were sleeping on the floor without any mattresses. But we had each other. And we also had some blankets with us. We also brought in two dogs with us. So we were fortunate enough that we were also supplied with a couple of beds, table and chair. We were also lucky enough that we actually had a small storage facility that stored our cooking and our eating where. We were fortunate. We were one of the luckiest ones. The unluckiest ones are still out there brother and I had seen. We had met people along the way who have been out there. In our travels in the Antelope Valley, we had seen and experienced and gone through, survived. Housing is important, but the question remains how to get past the NIMBY. Not in my backyard. The stigma that's attached to the public opinion. 
that affects politicians because of money and who's going to be funding it. That's the real challenge, but also obtaining housing. We had water shortage, and we still have it out here in California. That's one political excuse. We also have plenty of land out here, but because of the water situation, it also curtails housing. Now, in the San Fernando Valley, there's no other place to get it, because in San Fernando Valley, they've already used up all the damn land they can, except for the hillsides, which drives the animals crazy, because we're taking up more and more of their land. It takes up more and more dollars. We need more and more places for it within the city of Los Angeles, within the county of Los Angeles. I'm not quite sure how the hell Kern's looking at it. Kern's been dealing with it over here in Rosemont, California. We have low-income housing in different areas of it. Outskirts, but yeah, they're not part of the community itself. They're away from the community, but they are within, well... Are they or are they not? But we have them on the outskirts, not within the general public itself, because if they are, it scares the living crap out of people because they kept thinking of drugs and crime and everything else happening. We're not quite sure if they're caused by the homeless people, but we've heard stories on the news reporting it, and not to mention on social media regarding it. Those are the things I've run into. Those are the things I've come across. Now, fortunately for me, being 57-year-old, old fart, broken down, but going to college, I'm fortunate that I am able to take care of a few advantages. I have seen other people at college campuses who are struggling like crazy. We have programs to help feed the hungry students that have programs trying to get shelter for some of the students who actually need it. We have a college campus that's trying to work its best through the community of getting those programs necessary to take care of people. But only if they had the support of the public. It's not a closed-off private domain. It's still public. But it still depends upon the whims of the city of Lancaster whether or not it continues. Current County is a different animal altogether. Most of their populations is probably uh, squeezed off into Bakersfield and Central Valley, and they're still trying to find places to live, but also have agriculture as well. The rest of the communities are open season out here. We have a city of California City. They have their own little city of sorts, but they're still part of Kern County. They have some of their own uh, resources. Ridgecrest has to borrow from Kern County as well. Mojave has to do the same thing. Tehachapi's got their own law enforcement, I think. But they also utilize Kern. And Kern's not the greatest county to live in, I'll tell you that much. And then there is Roseland. 13,000 people squeezed. Even though it looks like we've got the desert community out here, they still need to have more construction. But usually on the west side, the east side, we're compacted against the air base. And there is more room to, for development, but they're not going to develop. They're going to be putting up more housing over here. They're not going to do that. Take too much money and take too much time. And I don't know what kind of political resources or political goodwill they will have regarding the neighbors out here. This is a community that doesn't exactly like dealing with the homeless in the first place, even though we've had a few notorious ones, one of which was staying in this place for a long while, and he was also mentally ill. His name was Billy. But there was another real name out there, but I don't have that information available. But I had seen this guy around. And he had hung around the shopping center that we have, the only shopping center we have, a major one. And he would get donations from other people, and he would also uh, be a little schizotic. There is such a word for that one if I would use the other terminology for it, a little crazy. There are scientific terminology for it. There are medical terminology for his mental health condition. He would be sane one minute, and then at other time he wouldn't be. But 
he wouldn't be harming people all that much. He would sleep out in the desert right by uh, Jack in the Box that we would have. Now, Miss Page, Miss Dollarmore, Mr. Dollarmore, if you would just go to Google Maps, go to Google Maps, put in Rosamond, California. I want to get you a visual on this one. What are you looking for? Look at the west side and then look at the east side. Looks like any other kind of regular community. Imagine having homeless people hanging around a shopping center, which we still have right now. Still trying to find a place of shelter in which we have offered none to other people. If you can afford the low income, if there's room for it, fine. But we have a long waiting list. We don't have that many places to build them either. But you can see the land. You're starting to see some of the problem we have. Not to mention resources necessary to build. Look at the entire Antelope Valley. Again, we're dependent upon resources that we just are draining dry. Now, during a drought, we did have construction areas that had to stop because of lack of water. I should have been putting it into my finger count of resources. Up until a certain point, you're looking at part L.A. and part Kern, and then also part San Bernardino mixed in with this area. A little to the west from the, I think, 138 freeway. That would be part Kern and the northern, which would start from Avenue A northward, and then Avenue A southward is Los Angeles County. We have a supervisor out here, but we also have a homeless population out here. A lot. Seems like some of them are getting transported from up north, uh, from down south, up to north. So yeah, there are resource issues. There are housing issues that we have, and we need the money. We need the funding for them, but we don't have them. NIMBY. Resources. Public opinion. You make an interesting article, you make an interesting case for this, Miss Page. And yeah, the program may work. You've been in the field long enough, you understand a little bit what the problem we're dealing with. What you haven't said enough of is how to overcome it. It's one thing looking at the clinical, looking at it in a clinician style, to understand what the homeless people are going through. If you've, been, if you've been walking through, there's footsteps. If you've been living with them for a short time, maybe you get an understanding what they're going through. But you also have to look at it from the NIMBY side. I know, we have to raise the awareness left and right, but the public opinion still stands. They don't want, they don't want them there. They want them housed. They want them out of the way. They want them locked up off the streets so they can exist. I've been dealing with this sentiment for a long time since being out here. But I'll tell you one thing. Living in the San Fernando Valley and uh, in the city of Los Angeles and the county of Los Angeles in that area, we saw them. We bypassed them. They were invisible unless we saw the homeless camps. And then we get pissed off about it. There's not enough generation of goodwill and not enough public opinion in the positive side to take care of it. We have Mayor Bass in the city of Los Angeles doing her best. She's struggling with it, but she's doing a hell of a lot better than anybody else. Temporary as it may be, she's still working on it. And if they got programs working, try to keep them off the street, cool. Out here in Antelope Valley, it's a different story altogether. They don't have that sentiment. They don't have the public opinion. People moved out here in Antelope Valley to get away from the problems of the city of Los Angeles or any other major metropolis. And guess what? They brought it all with them, like cockroaches. Speaking of which, physical cockroaches to be dealing with. How about the low-income housing 
that would be infested with bed bugs and cockroaches. Deal with that one. So now we have to deal with Orkin on a weekly basis to get places sprayed like crazy. And sometimes it doesn't work all that much. You have to bug bomb them. I mean, seriously, bug bomb. Which means you need to move people out of the housing for, for a time. And then they had to start cleaning up the mess. We got people out here on limited income. Some of them actually do work. The complex I'm in, living in right now is right next to Edwards Air Force Base. We've had serious issues. We had an issue regarding a woman who was going schizotic. A lot of mental psychosis for this one. She'd look at you funny. And then she'd look at you straight. And then she'd wig out. Couldn't tell what was going on with this woman. She was having a real issue. A royal issue. They had to get rid of her. She attacked somebody. The people who were caregivers to her abandoned her. She's somewhere out there in the streets. Disappeared or something. We don't know. Town didn't care. The guy they called Billy he was shot dead by a sheriff. There was an incident that happened at a Taco Bell, not the Taco Bell, but the Jack in the Box where he lived near. There was a tent encampment he was surviving in. He went nuts inside the restaurant. The story was he threatened a sheriff. A rookie. Starting out his re he was starting out his new his new post. Something happened in there and gunfire was exchanged. Well actually gunfire happened. Billy was pronounced dead on the scene. Some of the people came to Billy's funeral and memorial. After that, town forgot. Yeah. I keep the story alive in my head. At least most of it anyway. I know how close I can be to homeless. I know real close. I know it real close. I just wanted to let you guys know what was happening out here. Again, Jesse, I'll talk at you a little bit later when we get another another topic to go and hammer it out with, pal.